Hey guys, Jamie Lee here from Birdtrix and I have a really fun activity that we're doing today. Maybe not so fun for the parrot that's gonna be involved, but I'm hoping that it's super educational and convinces a lot of you guys to do the same with your birds at home. What I'm talking about is microchipping your parrot. Now this is something that I've done with my entire flock from as small as my 100 gram sun conures all the way up to my 950 gram macaws. Now today we got special permission to actually videotape this procedure being done. Kind of say procedure lightly. You can put your bird under for this, say if you're doing a full exam and maybe it's gonna be kind of traumatic, or you can choose not to put your bird under because really what's all going in is just this tiny little microchip which is about the size of a grain of rice but it's going into the chest muscle. So this is something that's really, really interesting and I wanna talk and clarify a few things about the microchip before we get started and you guys get to see what this looks like. Number one, a microchip is not a GPS or a transmitting device. You cannot track your bird through a microchip. The main premise of a microchip is for identification. So if a bird gets stolen, it can have its leg band cut off in an attempt to, for those people to conceal that they stole that actual bird. So for you to go and prove that that bird is actually yours, simply hold up a microchip reader and it shows that unique microchip number with its registration to you. So this is a great way to protect your birds from theft and get them back, say, if it's not even theft, if your bird just happens to get out, somebody finds it, turns it in, they can scan that bird and know that it belongs to you. So that is the purpose of a microchip. Now, I can't wait to show you guys what this looks like because it's a fairly easy, non-invasive procedure that I think most pet owners don't understand. And if they did, they would probably do it. So let's go. One last thing I forgot to mention is there are a few different brands since we started microchipping our own parrots out there on the market. Now we use Avid. It was one of the very first microchip brands out there. We also got ourselves an Avid chip reader. Why the heck did we do that? We were told not to do that, not to worry about it, but we ended up in a lot of circumstances where we were very glad that we had our own reader. You may not need to go to that full effect, but I do highly recommend it just because if people use a different brand, they cannot scan universally. So if you're using a Home Again brand and I have Avid, my reader will not work for your chip and vice versa. Also, there are some readers or chips out there that do cost an annual fee. Avid is not one of them. So I highly recommend that and make sure you get your own reader just so that you never have to think about it. If you need to show up at somebody's house or if you need to show up at a rescue or a vet's office to prove that that bird is yours, I wouldn't want the stress of thinking, do they have the right reader? <laughs> so this here is the microchip that we use in Australia. Um, it's an ISO microchip, so there's 15 numbers on the microchip. They come in uh, a small needle like this. Um, the microchip will be at the end of the needle inside the package there. And we use this scanner to get the number. So if we do that, it beeps and it has the number. Um, and those two numbers should match. This number then goes on a database uh, which is connected to the client and the client's name and their address. This is this little guy. For these little guys, when we microchip anything under 100 grams, I definitely offer an anesthetic. But the microchips these days are getting so small that I find that I can easily microchip a bird larger than 100 grams. And I find that the birds don't, or they tolerate it just as much as basic antibiotic injections. So the reaction that they give me, even though the chip is a larger implant is not much different from an antibiotic so I don't believe that it's worth the stress of an anesthetic for those birds. For these little birds I always give clients the option of a quick anesthetic uh, because it is still a large injection. So here we are just anesthetizing this little guy for his microchip. It's a very quick anesthetic but generally if I get less movement I'm less likely to get any significant bruising um, and that's the main sort of issue I get with putting microchip implants in is a bit of bruising. Because it's a quick anesthetic we just use a quick mask. Uh, we're not going to intubate this little guy. So we're going into the left breast area. I prefer to do these as shallow injections. The chip just goes on this little implanter. You can just see the chip in the end there. So it's a small rice grain size. 
even though these chips are, are meant to be quite sticky, I do prefer to go down the bird rather than go up just in case the chip sort of moves out the hole. And just a shallow muscle. And then just put the implant down. And a little bit of bleed out, just hold it in place for a little bit. We always double check and make sure the chip reads. And that's the read. Again, just compare it against the number. And that's it. You'll wake up very quickly from that anaesthetic because it's just a gas. We'll just hold this on so he doesn't uh, bruise. Waking up. Yeah. I like to kind of nurse tame birds awake. Um, if they're used to human contact and things, um, in my hands they keep warm um, and they're kind of a little bit less sort of stressed. If it's more a wild bird, I will um, pop them in a hot box in sort of a more dark environment so um, they can wake up sort of gradually by themselves. But once he's sort of more fully awake, we'll just, oh, there he goes. It just helps, they have an excitable phase often, especially if they're just gassed down without a, a pre-sedative um, um, and they can get a little bit sort of disorientated and excited. So just gently holding these tame birds can just help them wake up a little bit better. Hello, are you nearly ready to go back? Hang on, there we are. Oh, you're a bit more with it. So when we microchip larger birds, the first procedure is firstly make sure the microchip works and the numbers all match. And then just make sure the bird hasn't already been microchipped in the past. Um, now I prefer to go down into the muscle, get a little bit of alcohol just to clean the area and that helps keep the feathers away as well. The microchips are quite small, they're non irritant. The biggest issue really is just the size of the needle. So with the bird restrained, we just gently, I just gently put this on. These needles are fairly sharp. So I just put gentle pressure and gentle pressure and just gently push them into place. Keep them fairly shallow. Once it's in place, put the needle in. Check the chip. So the chip's working. Always a little bit of blood and that's just simply because of the size of the needle and again, there's more chance of bleeding going down the muscle than up the muscle. Uh, but just put a little bit of pressure for a time. I find I get much, much less breed, uh, bleeding if the bird's not flapping. So if they're restrained properly and they're not flexing those muscles, I get much less sort of bruising and much less complication. But you can see the bird wasn't sort of phased by that. It's still fairly nice and relaxed. And it was just a tiny bit of blood spot and that was it. If we just leave it alone and just gently put the bird back in the cage and they perch in the cage, then generally it, uh, it, they don't have any ongoing sort of issues. Keep them quiet after uh, handling for about sort of 12, 24 hours, but that's the case no matter what happens. So I always suggest that when any bird gets injections or anything done at the vets. And they pop it back. There we go, that wasn't that bad. There we go, she's beautiful. <laughs>